morning and welcome to worship. It is Easter Sunday. He is risen. risen So let's rise together. And as we come together on this Easter morning to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, let's begin with a worship song. It's called Jesus Christ is Risen Today. It's 151 in a hymn book. But before we do that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your son, Jesus. Thank you for the wonderful surprise that you gave to us on that Easter Sunday. Death is gone. You've defeated the devil. We ask, O Lord, now that you would give us praise on our lips to sing praise to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our service continues in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen today. standing for the gospel. The Holy Gospel is from St. Luke, the 24th chapter, starting with the first verse. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took their spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they wondered about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over into the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day, raise again. Then they remembered his words. And when they had came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, 
and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed like nonsense. Peter, however, got up, ran to the tomb, and bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated as we sing our sermon hymn. It's called, I Know My Redeemer Lives. church. Good morning. Awesome. You know, so I got some good news for you. I don't know if you've heard, but the word is Christ has risen. He's risen indeed. This is such good news. And for me, I love the fact that we get to celebrate Easter in the springtime. I love the springtime. You know that the sun begins to shine out. The birds are chirping. But for some reason this year, out of the blue, the spring decided to get all sneaky on us. Like, you, like snow. We had snow in April, people. That was crazy. My younger brother, Seth, he came up to me that Monday morning. And he's like, Ethan, Ethan, wake up, wake up. There's snow, there's snow. And he's all excited because he doesn't have any school. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm thinking, no. No, 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 no. This is not supposed to happen. And I'm not ashamed to say that I am a cold baby. I like the sunshine. I hate the cold. And so I was not excited when I heard this news because when March and April and May hit, I am so ready for that springtime sunshine. But when you get hit with snow instead, it is such a tease, right? And so if anyone understands the heartbreak of feeling teased, It was Jesus's closest companions. It was Jesus's followers. It was Jesus's disciples. It was Jesus's friends. So will you fast forward with me just before Jesus's resurrection? Remember, the disciples had spent three years following this rabbi, Jesus. And they had come to know that Jesus was a place that they could put all their faith, all their hope, all their trust, all of their being into. Or another way to put it, because it's Easter, they put all their eggs into one basket. They had fully dedicated themselves to this person, Jesus. 
They had given up their old lives. They had given up their old careers. They had given up their old sources of income because they believed that this Jesus was the person of whom they believed was the anointed one. The redeemer of Israel, the long awaited and promised son of God who is going to redeem them, who is going to liberate them from Roman oppression and free them from all of their enemies. This was the Jesus who was going to bring about political victory. They were so excited. But then what happens? The complete opposite happens. The complete opposite happens. Their hope was crushed. Their hope was crushed as they saw their Jesus pierced in his hands and in his feet. Their hope was crushed as they saw their Jesus beaten and bruised and bloody. As they saw their Jesus hung naked on that rugged cross. As they saw their Jesus dead. For three days of what must have felt like the longest three days ever, the disciples of Jesus were left alone, left mourning, left disoriented, and left hiding for their lives in fear that the Jews might take their lives too. See, in church, there is a lot of talk about the crucifixion of Christ and the resurrection of Christ, and for very, very, very good reason. This is the climax point in which all the gospel writers lead up to. But for just a moment, will you dwell with me? Will you dwell on just those three days in between with me? Will you dwell on those three dreadful, despairing, wretched days? From the disciples' perspective, it was probably extremely difficult to see what good could possibly come from their Lord, their holy Jesus, who, who just who was put on a cross and was crucified between two criminals. This was the Jesus who promised life in his name, victory in his name. Yet all they know at this point is that he is now lying in a tomb dead. I gotta say, if the story ended here, Oh man, it would be such a tease. I mean, talk about a dead end. All hope seemed to have vanished behind that cold, dark tomb. And I'll be honest with y'all, I do not like the dark. Anyone like the dark? I do not like the dark. And especially, I do not like dark basements. Anyone else afraid of dark basements or to be the last person in the basement when the lights go off? It's terrifying because there's dark and then there's really dark. Stepping outside in the nighttime, it's dark, but at least there might be some stars or or the moon to give off some light. But when you're in a basement, it's really dark. There are no windows. There are no places for light to shine through. And so it makes me think of and, and remember when I was growing up and living in North Dakota, (laughs) the light switch to the basement was at the bottom of the stairs, meaning all the lights had to be turned off before I could leave the basement and go up the stairs, meaning I had to experience a few seconds of horrifying darkness alone. So you better know, right when I hit those light switches off, I am bolting up those stairs, running, running, and slamming that door. Darkness is scary. Darkness is unsettling. No one likes the dark. Yet Jesus knew there could be no life without death. There could be no glory without suffering. There could be no light without facing the darkness. In a moment, I want to invite you today to take a deeper step into this resurrection story. We all want to experience the resurrecting life and power of the risen Christ, the victory of the risen Christ. But it is important that I remind you of where it all occurred. Church, will you stretch your imaginations this morning? Will you step into this and visit with me and contemplate with me Jesus at the tomb.
It was in the darkest, deadest of places where Easter Sunday began. When you think of darkness, what is it that comes to mind? Is it not in the dark places where all hope seems to be lost? Where, where life seems to hit rock bottom? Where our vision gets blurred? Where the road hits a dead end? Where fear overwhelms us? The presence of darkness is unsettling. It makes you want to run. Yet, hidden within the darkness of the tomb was a glimmer of hope. Hidden within the darkness of the tomb laid the light of the world. Jesus declares, I have come into the world as a light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. For though once your heart was full of darkness, now it is full of light from the Lord. For God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Even the darkness will not be dark to our God. The night will shine like the day. Behold, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. All those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And so I say, wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Church, Christ has risen. Christ has risen. And so today we have a reason that we can proclaim death, where is your sting? Death, where is your victory? Today, we can joyfully celebrate the Christ who has defeated death and darkness and the evil one because that means that we too are victorious. We too can rise above the chains that enslave us, the chains of sin and death. There's something so beautiful about the resurrection day. You see, Jesus, he went into the tomb wrapped in clothes of mourning. And then Jesus walked out of the tomb and he walked out of the tomb in new garments. Jesus, the day that Jesus stepped outside of the tomb, <laughs> the world was changed forever. Because from that resurrection day, Christ has turned our mourning into dancing. Christ has taken off our clothes of mourning and he has clothed us with clothes of joy. Church, today, you have every reason to take off your clothes of mourning. You have every reason to lay down your clothes of mourning. Christ has defeated death. Christ has defeated darkness. It has no hold on you anymore. It has no claim on you anymore. Church, you have every reason to put on new garments. Oh, got to unbutton the new garment. We have every reason to put on new garments of praise. Christ hath closed you anew. You don't have to step in the darkness anymore. You don't have to walk in it. Christ has given you victory over it. You can say, darkness, you have no claim on me anymore. Kick that thing out of the way. You have been made new. You don't have to wear what Christ has defeated any longer. Church, can I hear you proclaim that? Darkness, you have no hold on me anymore. Say it. Darkness, you have no hold on me anymore. Church, do you realize what that means for us today? Do you realize what the resurrection means for us today? It means everything. Because the resurrection of Christ changed everything. It is only through the work of a risen king that we may become a new creation. It is only through the work of a risen king that we may be robed in righteousness. 
It is only through the work of a risen king that we are now covered by Christ. We have put Christ on, and because of that, I am blameless now. I am holy before the Lord. Because of the empty tomb, you have been marked forever. Church, will you receive that? Will you receive the work that Christ has accomplished? You might feel the weight of shame. You might feel the weight of darkness. You might feel the weight of sin. But may I remind you of the truth in which Christ has accomplished forever. When you put on the resurrected Christ, Christ does not see a nobody. Christ sees you and he calls you beloved. He sees you now and he calls you daughter. He sees you, he calls you son. When you put on the resurrected Christ, Christ does not see a lost cause. Christ breathes in new purpose in you. He breathes in new life to your lungs. And when you put on the resurrected Christ, God does not see a lost cause. God sees and, and, and puts in life in your bones and he also wants to know that you are, he is with you and he is moving in your life. And when you, when you put on the resurrected Christ, you are not, no longer who you were. Christ does not see who you were or what you have done. Christ sees who you have become. He has made you new. Christ does not condemn you. Christ has made you free. Those who believe in Christ and belong in Christ have been transformed in Christ. Can I ask a question? Who here has been baptized? Amen. Hallelujah. We, baptism is an incredible thing. Did you know that in the early church, it was on Easter day that new converts would be baptized? And with baptism, you're probably wondering, like, why? Why is that happening? Why, why do we do this? Well, first of all, because Jesus said so, right? Secondly, because when we are baptized in the water, we are connected to Christ's death. Followers of Christ who have chosen to be baptized in Christ are not just hearers of the resurrection story. They are a living embodiment of the resurrecting power. As followers of Christ, we cannot merely talk about the resurrection of Christ without acknowledging the resurrection that has happened in our very own lives. The good news of Jesus' resurrection was not merely good news 2,000 years ago. The resurrection, it continues to reach out for us today and for eternity. God's resurrection power, it lives, it moves, it interrupts across all time and generations. And as a Christian, it was not just a big deal to Christ's disciples who walked with him. It is a big deal to us right now. Because we have been baptized into this resurrecting work of Christ. And scripture tells us that we share in Christ's resurrection work. Colossians 2.12 reminds us of this mysterious and powerful work of God. It reminds us that we were baptized, as we were baptized in the water, we were joined with Christ. We, were, we died and we were buried with Christ. And just as Christ was raised by the power of our glorious God, when we rise out of the water, we are clothed anew. We have been raised with Christ to new life. We have been raised to the fullness. Praise be to God that my story and your story is connected to Christ's story, is joined to Christ's story. There is no greater news than this. We are new creatures. Yet somehow, it actually does get better than this. You think it's over, but it gets better than this. In John chapter 20, the resurrected Christ appears to his disciples. And they're probably freaking out. They're thinking, what? Like Jesus comes back to him. He's like, hey, what's up, dudes? Dudettes, long time no see. And they're like, what is happening? This is crazy. And although Jesus came and, and to declare this good news that he has conquered death and now he has been brought to new life, this was not Jesus' only news. Jesus also returned to his disciples with a mission and a message. 
And Jesus declared the message that their story does not end with the resurrection. Their story does not end with the resurrection. Rather, it was the beginning of a new story. And in, the, and in this new story, the resurrected Christ was calling them to live resurrected lives. You see, the mission of Christ was not merely to pave a way for you to go to heaven. There is more to life than death, believe it or not. Rather, the mission of Christ was to bring heaven to earth. Do you recall in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this mission to bring heaven to earth extends to us today. We are the continuation of that story. God wants to bring about a resurrection work today in the lives of the people around us. And he chooses us. God chooses us to accomplish that work. Jars of clay, broken and bruised, yet chosen to bear the glory of God. Why? Sometimes like, why God? And it begs the question, how on earth do we go about accomplishing such a mighty task, such a mighty work with God? That's a big task. Well, Jesus actually tells us. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus says in Luke 24, 9, I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So what is this promise of God? Well, earlier in John 14, before Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus promised his disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit was basically the best gift ever, okay? And when he promised them this gift of the Holy Spirit, now it is in John 20, six chapters later, where Jesus fulfills that promise to his disciples. Jesus fulfills that promise and he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. And they received the Holy Spirit. But who is this Holy Spirit? Scripture tells us the Holy Spirit is our advocate. The Holy Spirit is our helper and our friend. The Holy Spirit is also the spirit of truth to guide us in all truth and to lead us into what Christ has revealed to us, to teach us all these things. And as Romans 8.11 puts it, this same Holy Spirit who raised Christ Jesus from the dead is now living in you. The Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in us. The Holy Spirit is living and active and moving in this place right now, in you right now, in us right now. Do you realize what that means? Do you realize what was just said right there? This is why I have come this Easter morning. This is why I've come to celebrate this resurrection life that Jesus has accomplished, that we share in Christ Jesus, and to remember that now Jesus has sent us. Jesus has equipped us. And Jesus has clothed us with power from on high so that we can therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey all things he has commanded to us. Church, the resurrection of Christ is not something we can allow to leave our minds the moment that the clock, uh, the clock strikes midnight. It's not something we can allow to leave our minds when the calendar season of Easter is over. No. The resurrection of Christ is something that demands a response. It demands a living and active response from us. And so church today, I want to ask you, will you rise? There is too much life to be given for us to keep it to ourselves. There is too much power in the name of Jesus for us to keep his name to ourselves. 
There is too much darkness in the world around us for us not to combat the darkness with the light alive in us. And so church, today I commission you to go forward and step into the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit through the work of the resurrected Christ that we may go out and live resurrected lives today. So church, arise. Church, arise. Church, arise. Almighty God, I thank you for this body, this congregation. I thank you for community of faith. I thank you for the work you accomplished on Easter day. Lord, will you empower us to step into that mighty work? Will you help us to live into that story that we may claim those truths in our lives today? We celebrate you, Lord, that you have risen. And because of that, Lord, we may rise with you. Death has no hold on our lives. We are more than conquerors in you, Christ. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. We're going to get ready to celebrate Holy Communion together so that we get strength for the journey ahead. We're going to start with a word of prayer, and then from that we'll sing a hymn together to prepare our hearts to receive Holy Communion. It's interesting that um, Ethan, when he preached this morning, he used the illustration of um, darkness, and he doesn't like the dark. The darkest place in our house is the basement. Guess who lives there? Ethan's that. I have to make sure I put more lights down there now. So let's take some time and let's pray. Heavenly Father, this is a day of celebration that you've given the church and you've given us as Christians to celebrate and to share this news with the world. What a huge privilege you've given us. But we know we cannot share this message without you. We know we cannot do it at all without your Holy Spirit. So we ask, O God, that you may fill this church, fill this place, fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit to share the best news this world will ever receive, which is in your Son, Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead. Fill us with purpose, Lord. Fill us with a mission, Lord. Clothe us with your presence and with all the attributes of your Spirit of love and compassion and kindness and goodness, and forgiveness, and mercy. And now, O Lord, we come before you not only asking that your Holy Spirit would drive us out of here to share the good news in word and deed, but Lord, we know we need strength for the journey, and you knew that even before your death. And so you celebrated with your friends the disciples, to share a special meal. And now you've given that meal for us to eat, Lord, for us to be prepared to share the message of salvation to the world. And so strengthen us, God. But you've not only given us this meal, Lord, to remember you of what you've done on the cross and your resurrection. You you didn't only give us this meal to remind us that forgiveness is in your name, but you've also given us this meal to be strengthened for the journey. Oh, Lord, will you strengthen us today? Strengthen us for our mission you've given us. And so this morning, Lord, help us to hear those words you spoke to your disciples long ago as I share with the people now. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And at this time, I'd like to invite the church. You'll have 
um, a, a wafer and a capsule of grape juice. I invite you to open that up. And on the very top, there is a wafer there. We invite you to take that and eat that. The body of Christ given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Even though it was afterwards, let us sing this familiar song, where we remember what we've just done. It's called Let Us Break Bread Together. stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace now and forever. Amen. Before receiving the benediction and our closing hymn this morning, I wanted to share a, a few announcements with you. It's that time of the year where our congregation is being ascending church, likes to support those that are going to college, their senior year going into college or in their process in the college years to receive scholarship money. And so if you'd like to be a part of that to give toward it, the Nina Heigerkin Memorial Fa Educational Scholarship Fund 
is looking for your support if you'd like to give to that fund and to for students to apply for this application because the time is now. Also, if you when you look at our announcements uh, this morning, you'll also see something coming up. It's called Beautiful Souls. It's a ministry of our women that we do once a month at the end of the month. And so on April 30th from 10 o'clock to noon, we have a women's ministry right here. We'd like to invite all the women to be here for the Beautiful Souls event that's coming up very soon. And then finally, it was in 2019 that we went to Israel together. And finally, they're opening up Israel and around the world to tourists to come around. And so they're planning a trip to Israel again on March 2023. So it's coming up. And if you'd like to be a part of that trip, just let me know so we can get you all set up for the, the meetings to get ready for that incredible trip. We continue our sermon series called The Story, and as we celebrated on the day of resurrection, that's our focus, was Easter today. And then we're starting, as we go through uh, the season of uh, Easter, where Jesus was with his disciples for, and 500 others, as he showed himself for 40 days, then we come into the season of Pentecost, and we invite you to be a part of the story going forward next Sunday. It's great to have you here. Receive the benediction as you go forth with the glory of Easter. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn is Thine is the Glory. Let's sing. Christ is risen. Happy Easter to all of you. We have refreshments out front. We invite you to join the fellowship. Go in peace and serve the Lord.